Mr. Register, will you please call the case? Good afternoon, Your Honours. This is case number IT 0587-1I, the prosecutor versus Vlastimir Georgievich. Thank you. And could I have the appearances from the prosecution? Thank you, Your Honour. My name is Tom Hannes. I represent the OTP. I'm assisted today by trial attorney Christina Muller on my right, and on my left, our case manager, Susan Grog. Thank you very much. And the prosecution? Good afternoon, Your Honors. And my learned friends, I'm Yelena Nikolic. I'm duty counsel, currently representing General Vlastimir Georgievic. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Nikolic, and I thank you for your willingness to uh, take care of this matter today. Good afternoon, everyone inside the courtroom and in the gallery. <clears throat> this is the initial uh, appearance under Rule 62 of the Tribunal's uh, Rules of Procedure and Evidence. Uh, the initial appearance of Mr. Vlastimir Georgievich who was indicted by the tribunal in October 2003 and who was arrested Sunday last in Montenegro, I understand, and brought here to the tribunal on that same day. Now, once an accused has been arrested and brought to the seat of the tribunal, the first thing that has to happen is that the accused must be brought before the trial chamber to which the case was assigned by the president or to a judge of that chamber. And there he must make a plea of either guilty or not guilty to the charges raised against him in the indictment. That is the sole purpose of this hearing today. And that's all that's going to happen. But before we begin, I'd like to ascertain that you, Mr. Georgievich, can hear me and understand what I'm saying. I can hear you and understand you. Thank you very much. The first thing I guess I should do is to establish that you are who you are. So uh, I would like you to state your full name. George. Vlastimir Georgievic. And what is your date of birth? Said that. 17th of November, 1948. And your place of birth? The village of Koznica, Vladechin Han municipality, Serbia. Thank you. And what is your nationality? Serbian. Mr. Djordovic, where did you reside at the time of your arrest? What was your Belgrade. Belgrade. Uh, Belgrade Battalion 39 is the name of the street. Thank you very much. And what was your occupation when you were arrested? A retiree. And lastly, uh, could you inform us of uh, the name of your father and mother? My father's name is Stoyan. My mother's name is Rushkeva. Thank you. Mr. Djordjevic, has your family been informed of your arrest and transfer to the seat of the tribunal? Yes. Pursuant then to uh, Article 20 of the statute, I first have to satisfy myself that, you, that your rights at this stage of the proceedings have been respected, including your right to be promptly informed of the charges against you and of your right to counsel. These rights are enshrined in Article 21 
of the statute, and they include uh, the right to a fair and public hearing, the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, the right to be informed promptly and in detail in a language you understand of the nature and of the cause of the charges against you, the right to have adequate time and facilities for the preparation of your defense, and to communicate with counsel of your own choosing, the right to be tried without undue delay, the right to be tried in your presence, and to defend yourself in person or through legal assistance of your own choosing, and to be informed of this right, including the right to have legal counsel assigned to you where the interests of justice so require, and without payment by you if you have not sufficient means to pay for counsel by yourself. Also the right to examine and to have examined the witnesses against you at trial, and to obtain the attendance and examination of witnesses on your behalf under the same conditions that those witnesses brought against you. Also the right to have free assistance of an interpreter if you do not understand or speak any of the languages which are used in this tribunal. And finally, the right not to be compelled to testify against yourself or to confess guilt. I have to ask you, Mr. Djordjevic, if you were advised of these rights upon your arrest and if you have received a copy of the indictment. Do you, did you receive a copy of the indictment and have you been advised of these rights when you were arrested or when you came to the tribunal? I have been informed about all of my rights in accordance with the statute, and yes, I did receive a copy of the indictment. Thank you very much. Let's then proceed with your plea uh, to the charges raised in the indictment. I should also ask you, Mr. Djordjevic, if you have had a chance to discuss the indictment with your duty counsel. Yes, um, I d have had the occasion. Now, Mr. Djordjevic, according to Rule 62A, uh, triple I of the rules, you may choose to take up to 30 days to consider your plea, but you may also enter your plea today. Have you decided which of the two options you wish to pursue today? Are you ready to enter your plea uh, to the charges in the indictments uh, today, or do you wish to postpone this and then within the next 30 days have another um, initial appearance. A given that I have not resolved the issue of permanent counsel, I have decided uh, after talking to the duty counsel to postpone my uh, plea for 30 days. Well, I will then instruct the registrar to uh, schedule a date for a second initial appearance in which the accused will enter his uh, final plea to the charges. This makes it easy because we can then proceed to the completion of this hearing. Um, I Your Honor, if I if I may raise a point. Uh, I'm not sure we had established yet whether we haven't read the indictment to him. I understand that he was willing to waive it, but I don't know if we had made that point on the record yet. I'll be perfectly willing to read out the uh, points in the indictment um, or to just summarize them very briefly. But I suppose that this is really not necessary uh, in the circumstances since he's going to plead again. I think that's fine, Your Honor, if we take it up then. Mr. Djordjevic, 
before we conclude, I would like to ask you about your health. And if you have anything to say, we can go into private session if you so prefer. What I want to know is whether you are in a good shape or whether you are in need of particular medical assistance or if there are any other conditions that the court needs to be advised of before we uh, move on. When I arrived here, I was examined by a general practitioner. It was established that uh, there are no problems and everything is all right as far as uh, my accommodation is concerned and the staff employed there. There are no problems. Any points that you wish to raise at this moment regarding your detention? Is there any matter that you wish to raise at this point? Yes. No, everything is fine. And I think that it is in compliance with the existing rules. So, is there anything that the parties wish to bring up at this moment? You know, I just wanted to indicate to the court that uh, uh, typically we would make disclosure right away, but in the past when we've had temporary counsel appointed, we found it more efficient to wait until we determined who the permanent counsel was going, going to be because we made disclosure and then it got lost or incompletely transferred. So once we're informed of who the permanent counsel will be, we'll proceed immediately to make disclosure. I was just going to raise that point um, because I um, believe that the rules require that you uh, hand over the copies of the accompanying material to the accused 30 days after the initial appearance. But I suppose this is the, the final initial appearance we're talking about. Uh, nevertheless, uh, for the purpose of uh, facilitating the accused's um, considerations of choosing his counsel, he may wish to be given a copy of the accompanying material if that is possible right away. Um, and it also may be convenient for the duty counsel to have access to that material in order to discuss with him which of the counsels he may wish to choose. So, Mr. Prosecutor, if it can be done without too much trouble, I would prefer that you hand over the copies of the accompanying material to the accused and his duty counsel as soon as possible. And then I'm sure that the duty counsel will hand over uh, that material immediately to the assigned counsel once we get that far. But I don't think that there is any reason to to prevent the accused from having access to this material. Um, he needs all the time he can get. I agree. One catch for, for the accused and whoever permanent counsel will be is that, uh, under my understanding, the time limit for filing motions begins to run for them when the disclosure is received. So duty counsel may receive the material tomorrow. The time limit starts running and permanent counsel may not come on until the day that uh, motions are required to be filed. I, I just want to alert uh, the accused and counsel to that. Thank you very much. Nevertheless, I think you should proceed with uh, making these copies available to the accused. Any other matter that needs to be raised, Ms. Nikolic? Yes, Your Honours, just two sentences. Um, I have um, the same position as uh, my learned friend from the prosecution. I do believe that the disclosure should begin, um, should start when the permanent counsel is appointed, given that the deadlines start running from the moment uh, the supporting material is received. Thank you. Yes. Um, my point was that the accused will be in great need to see everything that is available at this moment to him as soon as possible. And um, if he wishes to raise any motions, 
uh, of course, he will be aware that the time limit starts running from today, and I assume that you will advise him properly to this effect. So I think we should proceed the way I have uh, suggested. There was one thing that I wanted to ask about to the prosecution, and <clears throat> that relates to the proximity of this case with the trial against Milutinovic and others. And I would be curious to know if the prosecution has any intention of filing a motion for joinder, or rather rejoinder of this case to the Milutinovic trial. Your Honor, uh, that has been discussed internally. We have not made a final decision. We're trying to weigh the logistical pros and cons of that matter. But it I is understand. something that we will um, make a final decision shortly. And we have a pre-defense conference that's Friday in the uh, the remainder of the case with Judge Bonnie. And I'm sure it's a matter we'll talk about that. Thank you. I realize the enormous difficulties in joining the case, but I just wanted to know if you had any intention. Thank you. This concludes the business for today. This meeting is adjourned. All rise. Bouillez-vous le fait.